So the Nothing Phone 2, is it just a box of flashing lights or is that actually anything to it? If it was a movie, would it be Barbie or Oppenheimer? Well, I've been using it for the last four or five days now and that's what we're gonna look at in this video, the good and the bad, and there's plenty to talk about. Now, before I get talking about the actual phone itself, and we have got plenty to talk about, and I'm gonna be covering everything that I can think of to talk about on this phone, I just wanna talk about the company itself first. I've had two dealings or reasons to deal with them twice over the last week or so, since I became interested in reviewing the phone and buying the phone. So when I was interested in reviewing it, I thought, well, it's cheeky. I know I'm a tiny little channel, a tiny little creator, but I thought I'd reach out to them and ask if there was any review units. The old adage, don't ask, don't get. I had an email back saying, I passed it on to somebody and we'll get back to you. And that was it. I heard nothing else, nothing at all. And I say, I get that I'm a small creator, but it's, for instance, now, and it was a busy week last week. It was the launch week, so I know they would have been pushed. But to give you an idea, I am not a department. It is just me. And I answer every single comment on my YouTube videos and every single comment on my blogs on Medium. Now, I'm not saying it's the same number of requests that they're getting over at nothing, but it can be done. And if you've got a whole team that's dedicated to looking after creators and looking after the community, they should have at least got back to me. And the other issue was even more pressing. This is a business, so when I bought this phone, in the UK, we call it a VAT invoice. It's basically where I can get my taxes back on the phone that I've just bought. So I needed an invoice to put into the company. And well, on, on the order, there was a, a link to download your invoice, clicked on that, it was a bad request, which isn't a good sign. It's not a good start for a tech company. So after that, I thought, I know, what I'll do is reach out to them on Twitter. I'd done it just the day before with Adobe to sort something out on my Creative Cloud account, and it was done in a matter of moments. With nothing, never heard back from them. Still haven't heard back from them. So then I decided to email them, and I had to wait two days. And after that two days, I got an email back from them saying, have you got your invoice yet? Do you still need an invoice? And I said, no, nope, I haven't. And I'm still waiting to this day. So my first dealings with Nothing as a company really haven't been too good. They're meant to be the new kids on the block. They're meant to be the, the if they were <laughs> sort of Formula One, if they were Red Bull Racing, that's the, the company that Nothing are trying to be, the young renegades, the upstarts, the bad boys on the block. But they really haven't covered themselves in glory over this last week, as far as I'm concerned, and dealing with them. Right, enough about the company. Let's start talking about the phone, because that's why you're really here. There are just the two colors that you can go for. The dark gray that I've got here are also a white. And then as to the specs, well, you can order it with either eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, which is 579 pounds here in the UK, 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage, and that's 629 pounds. And the biggest one they sell, the big one is 12 gigs of RAM with 512 gigs of storage at 699 pounds. If you watch my videos for any length of time, you'll know that generally I say 512 gigs of storage is the sweet spot by the time you take into account operating systems, apps, the amount of apps we use, things like Lightroom. But on this particular instance, on this phone, I went for the, the smallest, cheapest phone because they didn't give it to me. I've had to buy it with my own money out of my own pocket. So I just went for the 128 gig storage with eight gigs of RAM, purely because it's not gonna be my main phone. It was never intended to be. And inside this phone, you get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 4 nanometer processor. And I must say, since I've been using it over the past few days, it's felt really sharp and it doesn't lag at all. That side of it is really good. The phone feels really, really fast and sharp to use. One of the first things I noticed when I was getting out of the box was that it just didn't feel very premium. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, the weight. Now I know we all moan about the weight, say on the iPhone 14 Pro that I've got, and even the Pixel 7 Pro. They're both quite heavy phones, but equally that feeling of weight, now I've made this comparison, actually does lend itself to a feeling of premium. It lends itself to a feeling of quality. When I got this out for the first time, it felt quite lightweight and plasticky, which is a shame because it kind of sets your bar of expectation quite low, when in actual fact, there's plenty of good things about this phone that I'll be getting onto later. And they just could do with something, I don't know what it is that's making it feel less than premium. The back, it feels very plastic, well it is plastic, and the front, for instance on the Pixel, you know I'm a big fan of that almost infinity wrap round curved screen. 
This just hasn't got anything going for it in the hand. And the other thing I noticed from the front, at least, it's very much, very much a takeoff of iPhone where the antenna bands sit, the, the chassis around it, and even where the physical buttons are, it's all very, very iPhone. But it's just that, that feeling of quality isn't there. And first impressions, you know what they say, first impressions do count. The packaging they use on the outside, that felt good enough. That felt very premium actually getting into it. It felt really good. There's no plastics on the outside. And also environmentally, they ticked all the boxes. Any aluminium in here is 100% recycled. Any plastics used in here are 80% recycled. The Nothing 2 has got a 6.7 inch LTPO AMOLED display with Gorilla Glass. The Peak HDR brightness is 1600 nits, but a more sustainable day-to-day -day use of 1000 nits. It's unfair because my main phone, of course, is the iPhone 14 Pro, which has got a better display, as you'd expect at the price point. And this phone is okay most of the time that I've been using it, apart from in pretty direct sunlight, fairly bright day over the weekend, it did struggle then. But to be honest, in direct sunlight, all phones are going to struggle a little bit. But I would say the display to look at, it's colourful, it's sharp, it's really fluid as well. It's got 120 hertz variable refresh rate on it. So again, going along with that Snapdragon 8 4 nanometer processor, using it and the display, it all feels really good. Those are the good points. See, there's plenty of good things to actually say about this phone. Unlocking is done either via fingerprint or by face. And if you use face recognition, you can also do face recognition with a mask, although hopefully those days are long behind us. One of the other great aspects of this phone has been the battery. I got this on Friday. I started using it Friday evening. It's now Monday evening, so that's four days long, and I've only charged it once to 100%, and it's still got 25% left on it. It is doing remarkably well. By far the best battery that I've ever tried in any phone. Uh, the connectivity, now, just a word on connectivity. Last week, <laughs> I did make a mistake. I know many of you picked up on it when I was doing the speed test last week. The Pixel 7, for some reason, went onto data, not onto Wi-Fi. I don't know why. I didn't switch it off. I wasn't trying to con you. I wasn't trying to pull a quick one. It was just an honest mistake. But this time, I've made sure that they're all on the Wi-Fi here in the studio. And as you can see, the Nothing 2 was, by quite a long way, the slowest of all three phones. Onto the cameras now, and certainly reading the specs on the data sheet, the cameras read really, really well. The main camera is an f1.88 50 megapixel 24mm lens with a Sony sensor, and the ultra wide is another 50 megapixel camera, which is an f.22 lens, and that one's got a Samsung sensor. But you don't get a telephoto lens on this nothing too. On the video side of it, you can record in either 1080 or in 4K at 30 or 60 FPS. The cameras on this phone, they just feel a little bit soft, a little bit muted. All the colors are there, they just need some guts. There's no body to them. They just don't, uh, you just want to grab them and shake them up a little bit. They do a good enough job, and I was, took a load of pictures over the weekend, and you wouldn't be disappointed with them, but the cameras do definitely let it down. As I said, there's no telephoto zoom on here either. You get portrait, macro, and pano, and a motion stabilization setting as well. When it comes to the macro though, one of the things I don't like is that you have to enable it manually. With the other phones, of course, if you take the phone near enough, it kicks in automatically. On here, I couldn't find a way, at least, of setting it automatically, and you have to go into the settings and enable macro first before you can start shooting your macro shots. But when it's shooting your macro, it actually does a pretty decent job. And the video, it's the same kind of situation as the other cameras, actually. The skin tones are okay. I'd say they're a little yellowy, they're a little plasticky. Again, it's just this whole reproduction of the colors that you get out of the Nothing too. They just feel muted. Somebody just needs to come along, give the camera a little bit more guts to it. It just needs a shake up. Testing the camera on the Nothing 2. This is the main camera that I'm using at the moment. So we'll be, uh, when we get back, we'll be able to have a look what the skin tones are like, what the audio is like. I'm not using any connection at all. This is all native straight into the phone. And next I'll try using the selfie camera so you get an idea what that's like as well. So by comparison, this is the main camera on the Pixel 7 Pro. Uh, again, the, I'm taking it at exactly the same time. The sun's just gone in a little bit, so it'll be interesting to see how that differs and how different the videos look. But there, it's worth mentioning the price. There was a sale on in the UK on the Pixel 7 Pro until recently, but that sale's now finished, which means that this phone is, the one I'm recording on now, the Pixel 7 Pro, is £900. And the Nothing 2, I paid just under £600 for that. It's got less storage on. It's only got 128 gigs of storage on, but it's just worth mentioning the price for comparison. 
are now on the selfie camera. Uh, I can obviously see myself at the moment, not a lot because it's such bright sunshine. The screen is reasonably clear to see. I'm struggling a little bit. Uh, I've got it up at full brightness at the moment, but it's, I'm struggling to see exactly what the quality of the picture is like. So again, I won't really know until I get back, but all of this is being recorded natively, just using the phone itself. I've got it in a gimbal, but other than that, just using the phone and nothing too straight out of the box. So we'll uh, compare this up against the Pixel, just so you get an idea of what the quality is like. And again, I can't really see so much. The screens are both struggling a little bit in direct sunlight. Obviously I can see the image, I can kind of see what's behind me, but I don't really know how good a quality it is. But again, I just wanted you to show you what the quality was like on these two Android phones between the Pixel 7 and the Nothing on both the main camera and on the selfie camera. This is the selfie camera on the Pixel 7. Audio wise, well, there's two sides to the audio. The first of all, the actual audio of the speakers. There's the speakers in here are terrible. I thought the pixel was bad. This is like going back to something from the 1980s, almost like a transistor radio. They are so thin, they are so tinny. There is nothing to them at all. Now, I know it's not going to come across wonderfully on the video here, but take a listen to this. It's really not good. Last week, if you remember, I was amazed at how good the Google Pixel 7 Pro was at speech to text. So I just wanted to see what this was like, the Nothing 2, how it compared. And watching it now, it's just a little bit laggy. It's falling a little bit behind my voice, but it does catch up uh, pretty well now. And it doesn't look like it's making too many mistakes from what I can see. The mics do a good enough job, though, and the call quality actually isn't bad. And if I was being honest, I think the call quality on this is fractionally, fractionally clearer and cleaner than the other two phones. Now, who do I always turn to when I'm doing a cool quality test? It's got to be my old mate, Alex, because he does such a good job for me. Alex, what do you think of this? What is this? Oh. David, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. So, I'm calling you off the nothing to. How does it sound your side? Oh, it sounds loud and clear. Are you on Android channel now? <laughs> Don't, don't. I tell you what, people are getting confused. Confused for <laughs> watching, so I'll take it. And talking of being confused, even I watched Samsung unpack today. Good event, right? Yes, good. I mean, it depends, right? If you, if you already have the stuff that they released last year, uh, it's not going to be too much difference. Um, I'm, I'm getting, well, it has been an expensive day. I got the Fold 5 and the Tab S9 Ultra. But they're very minor upgrades, let's put it that way. So the S23, that's still current. They haven't updated that, have they? They do that beginning of the year? That's right. That, that's going to be, yeah, next year. So, yeah, no, that, uh, Tab S, the, the Fold is the one I've been waiting for. Um, the Tab S9 Ultra I'm only getting because my channel, you know, it's a very popular channel. But, yeah, the, fold, the foldable, the, the big one, is the one I wanted to. Um, the flip looks great, but it's just I'm not their, um, <laughs> not their target audience, I don't think, for that. Yeah, yeah, this, I think the fold look more interesting as well, and the watches look like they've done a fair bit with as well. Yeah, it's looking better and better. I mean, the, the watch gets updated every two years, and so that's it's good. Um, I had Daniel on a stream as well earlier, so yeah, it's, it's been a busy day, like I said. Nothing too, it's got some fun features about it, it really has. Some good and some bad, like with all these fine. The call quality, I've been really impressed with, actually. Yeah, it's bad weather here as well, and, you know... Uh, I'm hearing you nice nice and clear, so... Well, I'll get this put together and I'll leave a link to your new Samsung video that you just posted today as well, OK? Oh, sweet. Thanks, man. But it's the UI, the interface, that's where this phone really starts to score. For some reason, it feels way more... It just feels yours. You can make everything you can customise and personalise. Now, I know you can do that to a certain degree with a Pixel, but on this, nothing. They've taken it to a whole new level. Every time I fiddle around with the settings, I find something else you can do. You can organize the status bar, for instance, to not only show the battery icon and the percentage charge of the battery, 
but also to show your Wi-Fi speeds as well, which is a nice little touch. I love the home screen and I love the font, the dot matrix font that nothing have used. Now, I know that's not to everybody's liking, but I happen to think it looks really contemporary. And again, it's one of those areas they've just not been afraid to break the rules. They've just done something a little bit different. And for that, I really do applaud them for. So I like the way the home screen looks. The icons themselves, you can have those labeled or not. Everything on here is totally, totally customizable. And you get different packs of icons to choose as well, from the colorful default range to the grayed out nothing pack, or the nothing pack with just a touch of color. And there's loads and loads of wallpapers that you can choose from as well. Something in there for absolutely everybody. There is so many beautiful wallpapers to choose from. And that is another great strong suit of this phone. I said, there is plenty that I like about it. The widgets are great as well. You get sets of widgets you can use. You can get a setting set of widgets or you can get a weather widget as well. And funny enough, the weather app on here looks great. All the different things you've got in here, it just looks, again, it looks independent. It does look fresh. They've done their work really well when it comes to the interface in this. And on here, it's been real fun to use. By the way, if you're, and you know what's coming, you know what's coming. I'm going to ask for that sub. It matters so much. Last week, you were brilliant to me. Once again, you've been really, really kind to me. You seem to be enjoying the videos that I'm making. And if you're enjoying this video and you're finding it informative, that sub makes a huge difference. As you know, I've just had to buy this out of my own money. So if you can give me that sub, that's all I'm asking from you. It would help me out so much. It just means YouTube pushes the video out to more people. More people get to see the videos and I get to make more content. So if you're enjoying this video, take a look at some of the others on my channel as well. I think you might like those. And that sub, I know it doesn't seem much, but honestly, it makes a massive difference. It really does, particularly to a channel of my size. Of course, the big selling point for this phone is the glyphs on the back, those LED lights. They take a little bit of getting used to, but I kind of like them. The whole idea behind them is that you actually use the phone less, that it sits on your desk face down and you just rely on the glyphs to let you know if there's notifications that you need to look at. And they're quite subtle as well. For instance, when you plug it into charge, this one down the bottom, that indicates how much charge you've got left to go. You can customize these glyphs to your heart's content. There are so many settings in there to play with. Well, I've only scratched the surface with them so far. You set timers with the glyphs, you set your bedtime schedule with the glyphs. If you're feeling really creative, you can even download a Glyph Composer app and you can make up your own glyph ringtones for any of the contacts you want and be as creative as you want. Yet again, it's another area where they've been super thoughtful with the UI on this phone. Everything about that, I'm absolutely loving. Reinforcing that idea of the phone not being too intrusive and getting in your way less day on a day-to-day -day basis. There's also a flip to glyph setting. And that just simply means with the phone turned down, you'll get notifications on the back of the phone to let you know there's something that you might want to look at. Everything about the UI on this phone, I've loved using. I really have. Carl Pei has clearly been on a mission to make nothing a little bit different. He's been on a mission to try and make tech fun again. And you know what? To some degree, he's done that as well. He's kind of made the phone feel less corporate, and he's made it feel less grown up in a good way. He's just made it feel more fun, more unique, and more as if you can customize it to really be yours. And even the name itself, nothing. It's a stroke of genius because it's short, sharp, snappy, easy to remember, and it raises a question as well. And it's easy to come up with thumbnails and titles for videos. It's just, it's a stroke of genius, the fact that he gave the phone the nothing name. It's brilliant because it just makes you intrigued as to what it's all about. The main thing is though, they've not been afraid to be different. The glyphs on the back might not be to everybody's taste, but it's different and it's caused reaction. It causes conversation and it looks different. The cameras are average. They're not terrible, they're average. There's no telephoto zoom, which is a shame. And the audio really is awful. The video, again, it's usable. If you're not trying to use it professionally, I think you'd be okay with the video. And at the price point, I think it compares quite well. Obviously, I'm comparing it against two more premium phones. And so compared to those, of course, it doesn't stand up quite as well. But I don't think it's trying to be a competitor to an iPhone or even to the Pixel. It's just trying to be its own thing. And that it's achieved. So I mentioned earlier on, is it a Barbie or is it an Oppenheimer? Without any shadow of doubt, this is a Barbie. This is fun. It's put a smile on my face. And every time I go to it, I find something different I can do to personalize it, something different I can do to make the phone feel like mine. The only thing I would come back to though is if nothing of watching, get in touch with me because your customer care and dealing with us has been terrible. You're the new kids on the block. You need to win us over. You need to back up this product with giving us some customer service. It's the very least that you should be offering us. But by and large, it's not a bad phone for the money and I've had 
fun using it. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget that sub makes a huge difference to me. Thank you for everyone that's been getting involved with the channel. It really does make a massive, massive difference. I'm going to leave a couple of videos for you to watch now. One is about the Pixel 7 Pro, and the other one is going to be suggested by YouTube. So your guess is as good as mine. But that is all I've got for you this week. I'll see you next week for more. Cheers. Thanks for watching.